Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you for your time with me. Today, our discussion will be on Zip B. So today will be the part three series of Zip B, the part one and part two series discussion of Zip B. The video link I have put under the description. So please go through the part one and part two series before you actually come to this video. There are two methods for channel access for ZP communication protocol. One is called the contention free. Number two is called the contention based. Contention free access is a method that the coordinator actually delegate a specific time slot to a particular device. This is called a guarantee time slot, okay, which means that this time slot is only allocated to a very particular device. No one is going to share this time slot. So therefore, it's called a guaranteed time slot. Therefore, a device with an allocated guaranteed time slot will start to transmit during this particular time. So this is called contention free access. Another one is called contention based access. Okay, all the device that want to transmit in the same frequency channel use this CSMACA, which stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collusion Avoidance. And the first one that find the channel clear to use, they will start to transmit. Okay, so on the next two slides, I will further explain what is contention-free access and contention-based access. Okay, contention-free access, the zip -B coordinator allocate a specific time to all zip -B device to transmit via a beacon. If there is a message to transmit, zip -B device will wait for his turn, then it transmit. Okay, so let me give you an example. For example, this end device want to send the message to the coordinator. Then this end device will wake up and it will wait for the beacon from the coordinator. So now imagine the coordinator send the beacon from the router to the router and then it reached the end device. Upon receiving the beacon, the beacon actually indicate which time slot is assigned to this end device. In fact, inside the beacon, actually assign all the time slot to all the ZP device in this ZP architecture here. So when this end device open up the beacon, it know that which time is allocated for it to use. So when the time is up, the end device will send the message to the ZP router. Same for ZP router. Okay, once it receives the beacon, it knows it time slot to transmit. So when the time is up, it will send the message to another ZP router. And finally, the message back to the coordinator. So over here, you can see that why it's called contention fee, because you don't need to fight with anyone when you actually want to send the message. The coordinator, in fact, plan like a timetable for everyone to assess. Okay, the timetable actually assign a unique time to all the device so that they won't have any collusion of data. So when the device actually receive the beacon, in the beacon actually contain information like when is, is time, which is called a guarantee time stop to transmit. So this is the first method, which is called a contention free assess. Next, contention-based access. Okay, for this method, you don't need to do any synchronize. Okay, earlier on method, you need to do some synchronize through the beacon. The beacon actually indicate the start time. So everybody has the same timing. And from the beacon, they actually find the so-called is guaranteed time stop to transmit. Okay, for this method, contention-based method, you don't actually need to synchronize which means that you don't actually need to send beacon. So if the end device want to transmit a message, okay, it will switch to a receiver and listen if anyone is transmit. If no one transmit, the ZigBee device will transmit the message. 
if someone transmit the message, then it will wait for some time and listen again. So let me give you an example again. For example, this end device want to send a message to the coordinator. Okay, before it actually send the message, it will switch to a receiver mode. Okay, it switch to a receiver mode to listen if anyone is using the channel. Let's say there's no one using the channel, then the end device will send a message to the ZP router. And then same for this ZP router here. So they will listen. If no one is using, then it will send to another ZP router. Let's say, for example, this end device switch to receiver and listen. Now someone is using the channel, then this end device will back off some time. After that, it will switch to receiver mode again. It will listen to see if anyone is using the channel. Let's say someone is using the channel again. Again, it will back off. Okay, it will back off until it listen. Okay, until no one is using the channel, then it will send a message up to the ZP router. So this is called contention based. Okay, when they actually want to transmit the message, they will switch to a receiver mode and they will fight with each other. So therefore, it's called contention based. They will fight for each other for the channel. Okay, so if let let's say there's no one using the channel then the device will send a message. If someone is using the channel, then it will back off some time. After that, they will try again. So this is called contention-based method. Okay, next, I'm going to quickly discuss, okay, for end device, okay, probably you can afford to put them under battery, okay, because end device are actually optimized for low power. Okay, but for router and coordinator, okay, I probably agree that AC source will be the preferred one. Okay, the reason is because okay, the router do not know when exactly the end device will send a message. Okay, because it do, does not know exactly when the end device will send a message, you will not be able to go to sleep, which means that 24-7, this router will be awake to listen if there's any message from the end device. And because of this, Okay, you could not afford to put this router in battery. Okay, if not, the battery also need to be replaced frequently. So hence, ZP router is always encouraged to put under the AC source. Okay, let's quickly discuss on the data rate of ZP. Typical data rate of ZP is 250 kilobits per second. However, we have this low bit rate option here. We can reduce the data rate from 250 to 28 kilobits per second. The key reason why we want to reduce the data rate is we can go extra range. Okay, this can be easily done by some coding. Okay, when we actually reduce the data rate, we actually have a longer preamble. Okay, so before we discuss on this table, let's quickly recall for Bluetooth. Okay, if you want to go for longer range, you can only increase the transmission power. Can you still remember? For Bluetooth, if you want to go for longer range, you can only increase the transmission power. But for ZP, again, we can also increase the transmission power, but we can also reduce the data rate to go for extra range, as you can see from here. 13, if you reduce the data rate to 28 kilobits per second, with the same transmit power, the range increased to 23 meter. So same wise here. So with this, I'd like to stop my discussion. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.